A grieving daughter discovers her missing father after more than a decade of searching. This summer, she has changed Texas state laws, forcing officers to do more for missing persons cases and the DNA records that they have stored. News Nation's Felicia Bolton has followed this story for more than two years and joins us tonight in the newsroom with the latest. Felicia. Yeah, Marnie, the major break in Alice Almondada's father's case surprisingly came from a Lifetime movie, not investigators. She calls it a real life miracle, and she's hoping the new Texas law will be the missing link for thousands of families still waiting for answers. June 2002 was the last time Alice Almondada saw her dad, John. And he sat in the backyard, watched us play, he walked us around, walked us to the park, took me on bike rides, he would give me a pump. He was just a girl dad. The father of five disappeared in Houston, Texas. After filing a missing persons report, the family searched for him for several days. Weeks turned to months, months turned to years, and still there were no clues as to where he could be. To have someone just vanish off the face of the earth is the emptiest feeling ever. Then one day, nearly 12 years later, Alice turned on the TV, and an ad in the credits of a Lifetime movie led her to a life-changing resource. And that website was called Outpost for Hope, and it kind of, that website basically is for people who fall off the grid. And on there, there was a link to NamUs. I had never heard of NamUs before. NamUs is the National Institute of Missing and Unidentified Persons System. It's an online database for missing, unidentified, and unclaimed person cases in the United States, fully funded by tax taxpayers' dollars through the Department of Justice, the Office of Justice Programs, and the National Institute of Justice. Medical examiners, coroners, and law enforcement officials from around the country can send over detailed case information for missing people, DNA of unidentified or unclaimed bodies, fingerprints and dental records for the unclaimed deceased, and hopes that NamUs scientists will use their forensic technology and investigative team to solve the case. The program is currently managed by the University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth, just four hours north of Houston. And it's free for the public, law enforcement, medical examiners, and coroners to use. Officials see the back end of the site showing all information surrounding a case, while the public sees this. Just enough details to describe who a person could be and where they were last seen. When Alice looked online at the NamUs website, she searched the database for unidentified bodies, and details for one unnamed man stood out. It was an unidentified Hispanic male. Everything that, you know, resembled that my dad had his, you know, his height, the approximate weight, and also the shirt that he was found in was a Houston Astros shirt. My dad was the biggest Houston Astros fan. She contacted NamUs, did a mouth swab, and sent her DNA to local officials, who sent off her test to NamUs scientists. They ran her saliva against the DNA stored for that man. The process lasted six months, and the results prove that John Doe turned out to be her father, John Almendares. It saved us. 11 and a half years if we would have known about NamUs a long time ago. She discovered Houston investigators found his body weeks after he was reported missing. His death ruled an accidental drowning. Police say he had no personal belongings or identification on him. Alice says he died near their neighborhood. This is Buffalo Bayou in Houston, Texas. This is where my dad's body was found. Everybody knew him as Johnny. Everybody in that neighborhood knew my dad. Two years after police found his body, Harris County officials buried him in 2004 in a nameless grave just 10 miles from her childhood home. Hey, Daddy. Before you would come here, it would say unidentified Hispanic male. So this is the first time that I've been able to come out here where it actually has his name on his grave. And I went on my high school graduation. It was in 2004. And I asked, you know, the, before my high school graduation, I would ask, you know, do you have anyone here that matches his description? And they would tell me no. 
And all these years later, I found out that he was in the morgue that I was at asking for him the entire time. Police had his missing persons report. The county had his body, but no one connected the dots between the two. Her story is one of thousands. According to NamUs, 600,000 people go missing in the U.S. every year. As of July 2021, there are nearly 20,000 missing persons cases entered into the online public system. So far, NamUs has helped resolve more than 5,000 missing, unidentified, and unclaimed persons cases. Despite the success, NamUs officials say many law enforcement agencies are not using this free tool. It's a problem Almondadas believed could be solved through legislation. So she turned her pain and to purpose. My dad's case was never taken seriously. It was reopened by NamUs, entered into the NamUs database. Our DNA was taken, and my father was linked to our DNA, and he was eventually identified six months later. HB 1419 has finally passed. This summer, the Texas Senate unanimously passed John and Joseph's Law, named after her father and another missing man discovered through the database. In June, Governor Greg Abbott signed that bill into law. Texas is now one of 11 states that requires all law enforcement agencies to enter data on missing persons cases into the online system. Some states give agencies 30 days to do so. Other state laws require 60 days, 90 days or more. The law enforcement medical examiner or coroner can enter missing, unidentified or unclaimed. And I will say also for the missing person cases, even family members and victim advocates can make a primary entry into NamUs. So a family member doesn't have to wait 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. They can enter that case into NamUs themselves. NamUs Executive Director BJ Spalmer says they are in contact with several agencies to train them on the database. But without additional funding or staffing for the program, there is no practical way to provide oversight. I think it's very important to have all of these cases in one central system to search and compare against one another. Um, of course, you also want to leave the local agencies with enough time to use their local resources before they enter into NamUs because fortunately, most of our missing persons are found alive and well. Without a national law, Spalmer says there is no uniform system set in place to keep all agencies on the same page. A problem Alice hopes can be solved sooner than later. There has to be some kind of law, some national law, not just a state law, a national law where all missing persons cases be taken seriously, put into a database, and after 30 days, DNA collected from family members. Otherwise, we're going to keep on with this silent disaster. And NAMIS officials say they are now seeing a backlog of cases and will not be accepting requests for forensic services at this time. This change happening at the same time the contract with the University of North Texas Health Science Center ends this summer and the new contract with the nonprofit group RTI International in Chicago will begin this fall. Several officers I spoke to say the NAMIS program is in fact a great tool, but without adding manpower to their department, it's unlikely they can keep up with the workload. Marnie? An important issue to highlight in this, this one story, Felicia, pain into purpose, giving families some hope and in some cases closure. Thank you, Felicia Bolton.